Ty Bartell in with another edition of Coach's Corner. This time we head up to our friends over in Orwell, Ohio, home of the Grand Valley Mustangs. Their boys basketball head coach joining me today, Justin Turk. How are we doing, Coach Turk? All right, Ty, thanks for having us. Thanks for what you do. Appreciate you. Yeah, anytime, Coach, anytime. Thanks for being a part of the YSN uh, family once again this season. I'm excited for this group of uh, guys you got coming back this year, too, and I'm excited for uh, another season of Mustang basketball on the network. Going to be a little bit different look, I know, inside of conferences. But first and foremost, it's practice season. It's scrimmage season. What are things looking like uh, for the Mustang side? What's standing out? Yeah, so at this point, we, we've actually had two really good scrimmages um, in the last week or so. Um, kids are playing hard, buying into what we're trying to do. Um, and there's a lot of optimism and positivity coming into this year. When you talk about some of those impact players we can expect to see on the floor this year, what are some names that we can uh, we could expect to call out a lot? And what are some names that you expect to get some minutes this season? Yeah, so we really feel like we should be able to go to an eight or nine man rotation this year, which is unusual. Um, we are led by three 12th graders, Ben Kozad, uh, Sammy Goforth, and Braden Art. Um, and then we'll have a couple other guys coming in um, in terms of Carter Turk, uh, Peyton Plisga, Joey Gaufidi, Noah Waldo. Um, and a couple other guys, and then maybe even an upcoming ninth grader here. So, when you look at all that, and you take all your, the guys you got coming back this year, what would you say some of uh, the team strengths are going to be this year that you're going to play to to get your wins? Yeah, so the biggest strength is probably our experience and versatility. Um, we really feel like we can be a matchup problem for a lot of our guys. Some of our taller guys are more of our skilled guys on a perimeter. Um, and so we really feel like we got a number of starters back and a lot of experience where we feel like we can match up with just about anybody. You guys are in the Northeastern Athletic Conference, the NAC, as a lot of people call it, uh, this season, if I'm not mistaken. And that always uh, brings a lot of good competition basketball-wise up and down for smaller schools. Talk to me about what you're seeing out of the conference and uh, what the transition and such looks like for you. Yeah, so obviously we're coming back. I think we were out for maybe five years um, or so. Played in a really tough league. Um, excited to come back and play against our local schools in terms of Maplewoods and Bristol's and PV's, um, Fairport's, all those guys, for Badger. Um, to be honest with you, haven't looked all that closely at what they have coming back, more so trying to focus on us. When when you look at this team this year, what would you say the identity of uh, this this version of the Mustangs would be? Yeah, so a lot of versatility, uh, the ability to score inside and out. Last year we struggled to score from the outside. This year um, that will probably be a strength of ours. Um, and then just a lot of guys willing to, to give themselves up for the betterment of the squad. Um, guys just want a, an opportunity to compete every night. And so um, the ease of being able to pass the ball on the offensive end are, are going to be some positives on our end. When you talk about trying to keep a standard of, of success to in a small school, it, it could be hard to and, and keep that standard throughout multiple classes, multiple generations too. I think you've done a pretty good job of that too over there at Grand Valley. When you talk about bringing in and getting the most out of your kids year in and year out, what's kind of your secret? What's how, is, how do you bring the most out of your kids for you? Yeah, so really it's it started. So this is entering year number 10 on myself here um, and really – we had talked about building a program from your third grade on up. In most cases, these are kids that I've coached or been involved with since third grade um, awesome. that are that are actually now starting to be uh, 10th, 11th, 12th graders here. And really, we expect for the next couple of years to really uh, be able to achieve the fruits of our labors. Um, hats off to many of our coaches in the rec programs in the middle school area. And so, uh, yeah, we always thought it would be a program build um, rather you, than coming in for one or two years. When you talk about that, is it easier to get the built program built to that standard? Or is it harder to keep that uh, standard set once you've gotten there? 
Yeah, so it's really about keeping the standard, and ultimately, the I, I tell the players that they um, are the ones that have the standards. That they they're the ones that are carrying out the standard for either the next generation or the next class. And so the leaders that we have this year have been nothing but outstanding for us. It has to be so cool as a coach to literally have guys that you you coach, like you said, from third grade on third grade on up. And just seeing the growth from literally probably learning how to first dribble a basketball to, to what they're able to do now, that has to be a, such a cool like a moment and experience for you. Yeah, and it absolutely is. And most coaches these days are either bouncing around or it, there's not a lot of stability. And so when you can try to get that stability and continuity with your coaches and with your rec coaches where you're all pulling for the exact same reason, um, makes it a, a, a blessing then when they get to the upper levels. Why Grand Valley, though? What keeps you coming back to this Mustang community, supporting them and pouring your heart out to them every year? Yeah, so I'm a uh, blue and white through and through. Lived here, born and raised. Uh, my dad was a coach here for 35 plus years, <laughs> um, went to school here. Um, and it was a, a dream job to be able to be, be able to be the head boys basketball coach here. At what point in your life did you say you wanted to pursue basketball coaching? Was that something that you felt like from a young age or did you find it later on? Yeah, absolutely. It was early on, um, without a doubt. Uh, I've played in college at John Carroll, um, but way before that, when you're in middle school years, I always felt I would end up being a coach here. What was one of the bigger things you uh, you learned from when you first started coaching to now that maybe uh, you've changed in a bit, your perspective maybe altered a little bit? What's something from early on to now that that's shifted in your coaching style? Yeah, so it's – and we try to preach this with our kids, just the appreciation of it, um, the appreciation of the opportunity, whether it's the ability to play or the ability to coach. And so I understand these things don't come around often. And so you really try to preach every day about enjoying the moment, competing. Uh, the competition doesn't last. Um, and so really just and try to enjoy every day of it. You mentioned how the growth you've been able to see from your guys from third grade on up. So when we're talking about goals and in terms of growth over the course of a season, I think every coach, no matter where your team is, whether you're going to be struggling to get wins around 500, one of the topper teams, I think every coach wants to see growth from game one to game 22. So when we're talking a short-term goal, say, from now until game one and a long-term goal, say, now until game 22, what are some of the goals you have uh, set forth for this team right now? Yeah, probably the easy coach speak would just be to try to say get better every day. Um, but we've kind of built a program here, especially over the last year or two with some of these kids that have bought in, um, whether it was in May and June, um, that really know what the expectation is, to know how we play, know, know how we execute our actions, um, that really we, we want to be ready to play our best basketball for game one. Um, and as we get better and get through on the year to be even better than in game 22 and game 23, ultimately. With the divisions now expanding in multiple sports, we saw it happen in fall. It's going to happen in basketball. Now we're going from four divisions to seven divisions, too. Um, it's thinned out the playing field in some divisions, too, but we see a lot of juggernauts still in similar divisions with smaller schools as well, too. From what you've seen, does it play a difference for you guys? Does it make a difference to you guys? How does the expansion of divisions, what's your opinion on it? Yeah, I'm not sure if I quite have a strong opinion on it other than um, uh, during our scheduling for our scrimmages, we definitely tried to scrimmage some teams that are in our um, bracket or region, if you will, um, that we don't play in, in a regular year so that we can just actually get a look at them or they can get a look at us. Um, but other than that, I don't know if I have a real strong opinion yet. I, I guess we're trying to wait and see how it plays out. Just focus on the next uh, task at hand, next opponent at hand, too. I love it. I love it. Coach, one of my theme questions that I've been having this year uh, goes to the lessons of the game. And uh, with your experience, you've, you're a player, you're a coach, you have experiences from all ends of the game. You're also a, a great teacher in the game, teach countless young men. But I actually want to know the biggest lesson the sport of basketball has taught you. Um, 
you get what you've put into it ultimately. Um, and so the more kids, the more you see kids working, the more you see them being able to reap the benefits of it. Um, and that goes with coaching too. Um, just try to get practice plans and try to plan ahead and scouting and all that stuff. And, and just trying to put the kids in the best position possible. Coach, I would be remiss to not give you an opportunity to shout out your coaching sh staff, shout out some other big names in this uh, Grand Valley Mustang community that you couldn't do it without and couldn't make this program go without. Yeah, so many hats off either to our youth coaches, our middle school coaches, Coach Bell, Coach Chan, um, our athletic director, Coach Paul, um, and then guys that are high school staff, Coach Plizga, Plizga Coach Mike. Um, a lot of those guys have been with us for a couple of years now. We, we've added a first-timer in Coach Atkins. So just the, a lot of positivity of a lot of guys that are willing to, to get dirty if they have to, and nothing's too big for any of them. Before we let you go, Coach, I want, I've want i been also talking about first games coming up too and, and giving shout-outs to the community. Because the opening tip-off for boys and girls basketball happens so close to Thanksgiving every year, either before or after it, it's always right around. I want you to shout out the community, let them know when the first game is, why they need to be out there for the Mustangs this year, but also shout out your favorite Thanksgiving Day dish. Yeah, so our first game um, is Wednesday prior to Thanksgiving at, at home uh, against Cardinal. Uh, if you don't know, we have one of the more livelier student sections in the area. Um, so we expect uh, kids coming home from school or work and stuff that Wednesday night to really pack the house and we get to play a local team in Cardinal. Um, so we're excited about that. In regards to a uh, favorite Thanksgiving dish, it would be the stuffing. Um, oh. It would be, it'd be the stovetop stuffing, not the homemade stuffing. <laughs> you gotta have the stuff. That 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 is the better one too. I think. Yeah, I I would agree. It's stuffing's leading the leaderboards right now too. You're just padding the stats on the on the top spot. But that's for good reason too, Coach. I'm so excited though to see what this uh, Mustangs team looks like this year too. Like you said, you got a lot of returners too. And I mean, it's a program that I've continued to see grow each and every year. And I'm excited to see it take the next step on the hardwood this year. Yeah. Thank you, Ty. Appreciate you guys. We appreciate you as well, my man. We're excited to have the Mustangs as a part of the network once again this year. It's been a first edition of Coach's Corner with Justin Turk. Go Blue.